Welcome back, CAD 5 class. Today we're going to go over problem 11-13. So this is the last problem from the handout for chapter 3, part 1. All these problems used to be in uh, the same chapter in the old textbooks, uh, 2015, 2016, maybe even older. And uh, now they're in different uh, chapters, chapter 3. Chapter 2 has become chapter 3. And these auxiliary reviews also used to be in the same chapter. So we're going to take these problems from the back of chapter 11. Okay, so we already went over problem 11-1. And today we're going to go over this last problem, problem 11-13. And just a heads up, uh, each problem is worth 5 points. Okay, for a total of 75 points. If you think this problem is not worth doing after, after uh, looking at this video, this is one of the toughest problems that you're going to have this semester and it's only worth five points if you think it's too difficult and it's not worth the five points i don't blame you if you give up on it or maybe you can come back to it later on okay so you're gonna have uh, another handout after this chapter three part two and those problems will be worth 10 points each and they'll be a lot easier than this one so if at any time during this video or anytime you start this problem if uh if you're just overwhelmed by it uh, either come back to it later on or if you just want to skip the five points hey you're more than welcome to all right so let's get started on problem 11-13 so we have our orthographic projections right and we have our auxiliary views all right so auxiliary views once again are views that are not projected horizontally or vertically they're typically at a angle typically 45 degrees in this case we have two different angles one will be looking down the slots as you can see and the other one will be looking down the axis of this circular hole that goes all the way through okay so before we start the auxiliary views let's take a look at the front top and side view and yes we're cheating we're looking at the solutions so let's complete these three views and then we'll move on to the first auxiliary view Okay, so here is the 3D model. Let's turn on the edges. Okay, there they are. Okay, so let's take a look at the front view. Okay, there's the front view. Okay, let's take a look at AutoCAD. Okay, so here is the AutoCAD file. Okay, let me uh, turn off some of these uh, layers. So I have orange for the auxiliary views, which will complete after the front, top, and side view. So I'm going to turn off the construction layer for the auxiliary view. And you know what, let's turn off the construction layer. There it is, gets a little too crowded. All right, so the front view, let's zoom in, roll the wheel to zoom in. Okay, it seems to be complete. We have the slot. Now, even though we have a slot on the other side and we need to represent it with hidden lines, it happens to line up with the slot on this side this rectangular groove so you're going to have object lines overlapping the hidden lines due to its opposite slot over here so we don't have to draw hidden lines for it because the object lines overlap them and it will overwrite any hidden lines but we should have hidden lines for the hole and also a center line for the axis okay and we should already have that yep Okay, so we already have the red hidden lines for the hole and the green center line for its axis. Notice how they're not at the same angle. Okay, so typically you wouldn't not machine a part like this, but the author decided to make this a little bit more challenging. So she's forcing us to create two auxiliary views, one looking down the rectangular groove and the other one looking down the axis of the center line or the circular hole, I should say. All right, so that's complete. Let's go over to the side view. Okay, so here's the side view. Okay, so let's take a look at the side view. Okay, there's the side view. Okay, so one thing to note is, even though this is a circular hole, from this perspective, it looks cylindrical. Okay, so if we were to rotate it, look down the hole, now it looks circular. But when we're looking at it at a different angle other than down the axis of the hole, 
it starts to look more like an ellipse. I'm going to exaggerate, right? And it'll look more elliptical, right? The more we deviate from the looking down the center line or axis of the circular hole. All right, so let's go back to the front view. Okay, there's the front. So the hole goes all the way through. We cannot see the exit from this perspective, so we need to draw hidden lines going straight down to represent the hole. A center line. So we also use center lines for ellipses, just like a circle. We also draw a center line for an ellipse. And also we have hidden lines for these rectangular grooves. Notice how they exit at the bottom. So we're going to have to draw hidden lines to represent this rectangular groove exiting or traveling downward vertically. Well, actually, not exactly vertically, right? At this angle. But from this perspective, it'll look vertical and then it exits, right? So we need to represent that with hidden lines. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the side view. And I'm going to go at a faster pace than usual. Okay, so we already have the hidden lines, right? So the outer hidden lines is to represent the rectangular, excuse me, the rectangular groove exiting at the bottom. Hit escape. And the inside hidden lines are to represent the hole exiting down at the bottom, right? It goes all the way through, exits on the bottom. We're just missing the green center line. Okay, so let's see if I can use the center mark on an ellipse. I actually don't remember. So let's go back to Annotate tab. So you should already be familiar with the Annotate tab and the center mark. Okay, actually I forgot to go to the center layer. Let's go back to the Home tab. Let's go to the center layer back to the annotate tab and by the way later on when we start dimensioning we will be using the annotate tab to dimension and to add notes and text all right so let's do a center mark see if it accepts oh it's not accepting the ellipse all right we'll do it the long way okay so let's go back doesn't like the ellipse thought it would accept it so let me hit escape Okay, let's go back to home tab. We'll do it the long way. We'll do it using line command. Okay, so there we are. So uh, since this is symmetrical, minus go all the way through. Let me turn on ortho. You want to have object snap turned on. Okay, so extend beyond and right click enter. Okay, so just a reminder, this is a symmetrical part. Left side and right side are mirror images of each other. So might as well draw one long green center line. And let's draw one horizontally from the center of the ellipse. There it is. See the little green circle letting us know it's picking the center. I'm going to track away. Now I can start somewhere around here, but it would be too tight. It actually would look cleaner if we go beyond. Even though this is longer than what we need, it just looks a lot cleaner. If we were to uh, shorten the endpoint so it's somewhere ending here or here, it just doesn't, it, it would look too crowded. So it's just better to just overextend. Okay. If yours is shorter, it's okay. As long as it goes beyond the ellipse, we're good. All right. So that's it. We're done with the side view. Let's go ahead and double check our solutions. Let's cheat. Okay. There it is. So there's the side view, solutions, looks good. And once again, see how here the center line, I went beyond the ellipse and decided to go slightly beyond the rectangular slot. So you could stop here, you can stop here. I just decided to just overextend just so it doesn't look too crowded. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the top view. Okay, so the top view, you can see how the hole exits at the bottom. Also the rectangular slots exit here at the bottom. So it starts on this surface and it exits at the base. Okay, so, and we do need green center lines again for ellipses. Even if they're hidden, we need to uh, draw the center lines. All right, so let's do the top view. It's gonna be a little bit more challenging. Hold the wheel to pan. Oh yeah, it's gonna be more challenging. 
Okay, so we have all the red hidden lines. Okay, so I made it easy for you guys on this one. I provided the hidden lines already. Okay, so we're missing the green center lines. So anywhere you see an ellipse, even the hidden lines, or the hidden ellipse, we need to draw green center lines. All right, so let's go ahead and we are in the center layer. Use line command. And once again, if you want to do it from here or a little bit further out, either one is fine. It's not a big deal. I click enter and let's do one from, so I'm going to do one from the center of this, this ellipse. So first hover over the ellipse so it knows to look for its center and there it is. If you don't see center mark, right click on object snap and turn on center mark. You can see the check mark lets me know that one's active. Okay, so let's go back. And I'm going to track away. I'm just going to overextend. It's okay. It's more than what I need, but it just looks cleaner. And right click enter. There it is. Okay, so since this is symmetrical, top and bottom are mirror images of each other, we can just draw one long green center line. Hover over the ellipse and then go towards the center. There it is. I'm tracking the center. And click and always overextend beyond the object lines. So this green center line not only takes care of symmetry, top and bottom part of the top view are mirror images, but it also takes care of the center mark for this red hidden ellipse and the visible white object ellipse. Okay, okay hit escape. By the way, uh, see this little portion here? So we're actually able to barely see where it exits here. Let's go look at the 3D model. Let's first go to the front view and top view. Notice how we barely can see how it exits, right? There's the exit. Okay, let's go back to the top. So we can just slightly see where it exits. So this portion will be a visible white ellipse, right? And we don't see the rest of it, so the rest of it is hidden. If we look at the bottom, let's take a look at the bottom. Notice how it where it exits. It looks elliptical, even though the hole is circular. So you can see if you look down the axis, when it exits at the bottom, it's a red, my mistake, it's an elliptical shape at the exit. So that's why we draw it as a red hidden ellipse if we're looking at it from the top, right? We don't see it from the top, but we know it's there. All right, so it looks like we're done with the top view. All right, so. Now we can move on to the most difficult part, the auxiliary views. Okay, so let's do the first auxiliary view. Okay, so since the three views, the front, top, and side were almost complete, we didn't really need the construction lines, but if you were starting this from scratch on your own, it would help to have construction lines, right? But we didn't need them because most of it was already done for you, the views, we just had to complete a few uh, or include a few lines, center lines, and now they're complete. Okay, so now let's go over to the construction layer. Okay, so we're gonna go to the auxiliary view construction layer. There it is. And it's a little hard to see, so let me turn it into yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the construction layer. And again, later on, we'll be you'll be creating your own. By the way, if, uh, if you want to practice setting up layers or you want to uh, learn more about the uh, commands that we haven't covered yet, like rectangle command, arc command, and some of the commands we have up here, we'll, I will be covering it in, a, in our next lecture. But you can also uh, go through the textbook. If you go through chapter one and chapter two in your textbook, it covers a lot of the, the commands that we're currently learning and we'll be learning in the next few videos. All right, so let me go ahead and make this yellow for the construction. And okay, and there they are, yellow. Just easier to see. Okay, so auxiliary view. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and draw our auxiliary view here, and then we'll do the second one. All right, so how do we create this auxiliary view? Pretty much what I did is... Uh, I'm going to use a, a different color just to show you how I came up with these construction lines. 
Later on, you'll be doing, doing these on your own. So if I was to take a line, and I'll just use center line for now. I'm going to delete this line anyway. So what I would do is I would, uh, since I'm looking down the slot, the other one will be looking down the hole. So if we're looking down the slot, we want to go parallel to the slot. So what I would do, I would turn off ortho, and I would track. I would track the slot. And I drew a really super long construction line by mistake. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> All right, but let me go ahead and use this construction line. So once I draw a construction line parallel or collinear to the slot, then I would just use the copy command. I would use the copy command and then go to every corner, every endpoint. Okay, so. I already did this for you, so uh, you don't have to do this. So I would go to every uh, corner, every endpoint to draw my construction line. So this is the approach I took. Okay, don't do this part. I'm just showing you how I did it. Let me hit escape. And then I would take the side view. Take the side view. And I would uh, make first make a copy, make a copy of the side view. I want to make a copy and keep it as a backup. <laughs> Turn on ortho to keep it in line. I would keep this as a backup over here on the side. You can keep making more copies by clicking. Okay, right click enter to exit. And then I would take the side view and place it anywhere along this line. So I would, I would translate and rotate and as long as you place it anywhere along this line to help you then create these construction lines so i want to show you how i did these construction lines so you don't have to do this part i'm just giving you a quick demo let me turn off ortho okay and then i would rotate it so we do have a rotate command there it is pick the point of rotation and rotate it and then I would do the same thing from every corner, draw construction lines going perpendicular to the existing green lines here. Okay, so that's what I would do once again. Using the line command, I would then start drawing construction lines, projecting normal to the top of the side view. And I would just draw a bunch of construction lines. And make copies. So you can see how fast it is and go to every corner to make copies or to project, I should say, go to every quadrant, etc. So this is the way you would come up with construction lines. I missed some of them, but I think you guys got the picture. Okay, let me hit escape. Okay, so that's how you do construction lines. All right, so uh, let me uh, undo. Okay, I just wanted to give you a preview. I'm going to just hit undo a bunch of times. Undo, as you can see, undo or control Z. Undo. There it is. Back to where we were. Ta-da. All right. So it was all a nightmare. Let's come back to the present. Wake up. All right. So, so that's the way I came up with these construction lines. All right. So I'm going to open the notes from chapter one, from chapter three, part one, right? So in the past lectures, I've mentioned uh, user coordinate system. Let's go down. So this is our lecture from uh, part one, chapter three. And I'll create a separate video to go over some of these commands. Okay, so we're looking at auxiliary views, right? Okay, so we're going to take advantage and use some of these uh, commands here. We have lengthen command. We have align. So we're going to use the align command to help us create our auxiliary view. And we're also going to use our own access system, user coordinate system, UCS. And if you don't have this turned on, all you have to do is right click on any icon and you can turn on your coordinates panel and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take advantage of the align command. Okay, 
So let's learn that command. All right, so once again, I'm gonna use a line to translate and rotate this view and line it up with our construction lines to help us create our auxiliary view. So we're gonna use the front and side view to guide us along in creating our auxiliary view. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, left mouse click and hold. And this, this takes a little bit of patience and rope around again. You're at a rodeo. You're gonna rope around the side view and boom, got it, right? Got your cattle there. Okay, so now we're gonna copy. So I'm gonna make a copy and keep a copy just in case I mess up the original one. Grab a handle. Make sure you have ortho turned on so it translates horizontally. So I'm gonna save this one as a backup in case I mess up the original one. Notice I have ortho on, so it only allows me to go horizontal or vertical. I'm done, so I can right-click Enter. All right, so I'm going to use this right side view and line it up with this, with these construction lines. So I'm going to left mouse click again, hold to lasso around. Okay, so use your rope. Yeehaw! So we caught the right side view. Okay, so now we're going to use the align command, right? So we're going to use the align command. Okay, so let's look for the align command here in AutoCAD. So the align command, we have to go to the drop down here. See where we have the modify panel. There's more options, so click downward. And it'll load more icons. And there's the align command. Okay, there it is, align. Click. Okay, do forget the order. Let's see if we click this in the right order. Okay, so I'm going to align this corner. I'm hoping I'm doing this in the right order. This corner, let me turn off ortho to this corner. Click. Then I'm going to align this corner to this corner. Okay, so what we're doing is we're telling uh, AutoCAD, hey, I want to translate this corner to this corner. And then I want to rotate it. So I'm going to use these two corners as a reference. And then we can still pick a third option, but we don't need the third option. Notice how it's asking us for a third option. We don't need it. So we can just hit enter and then enter again. So enter uh, because we don't have a third source and we don't need a third source. So to exit that part of the command, I'm just going to hit enter. And now it's ready to align and hit enter again to exit. And there it is, ta-da! So hit enter twice. Okay, so once again, we're cheating. We're using the front and side view to help us create the auxiliary view. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the auxiliary view in the 3D model. In the 3D model, let's go ahead and uh, look at the front. Okay, so we're going to rotate So we're going to rotate perpendicular to the slot. Okay, so imagine uh, like those uh, little cocktail flags or the or a little American flag on a toothpick. Imagine the toothpick lines up with this edge and you rotate the toothpick and the flag will rotate. So let's go ahead and... Uh, Oh, perfect example. So here we are. So imagine you take uh, one of these, uh, yeah, these uh, flags here, especially the ones with the, have the little toothpick as a post, and you uh, rotate it. So if you were to grab the post, the toothpick, and you rotate it by moving, your, you're holding it with your two fingers, and you rotate it so it turns 90 degrees. So just like you see here on this image, right? if you were to just move your fingers to rotate it 90 degrees, right? In this case, we're going to rotate it clockwise. Okay, that's basically what we're going to do to create our auxiliary view. Okay, so go back. 
So if we were to draw an imaginary line that's perpendicular to the slot, and again with our fingers rotate it, rotate it, and we look down the slot, right? So right now we're looking down the rectangular slots. Okay, so that's the reason for the angle of this view. It's just like taking that toothpick on the on the small American flag and slightly rotating it 90 degrees clockwise and this is what you get All right so same idea okay so let's go back oh before we do keep in mind we're looking down the rectangular slots and notice how we don't see the exit completely for the hole because it's at a different angle okay so the author she chose to make this a little bit more difficult right more challenging all right so We'll, see, we'll be able to see part of the exit of the circular hole, so we're going to have to draw a red hidden line. We'll come back to this. Let's first do the periphery. So we'll draw the periphery of the auxiliary view. We'll draw some of the object lines, right? And even though this looks circular, it's not circular from that perspective. From here it is. So this is a circular hole, right? But if we, as we start deviating from the axis, it starts going elliptical even though it doesn't quite look elliptical it is going elliptical it's just not as obvious as you can see when you just slightly turn it all right so let's go back to AutoCAD all right so we're going to draw our object lines representing the periphery of the auxiliary view so let's go to the visible object layer use line command okay so I'm going to go ahead and draw it Okay, there it is, right click enter. You didn't have to repeat this line here. We already have an object line. Okay, so there it is, the periphery. Notice how it lines up with the front view, right? Notice it lines up and it also lines up with the side view. All right, let me hit escape to deselect. Okay, let's take care of some of the easy lines like the object lines. Okay, so you do want to have ortho turned off. Okay, so we're going to follow this construction line, right? There it is. So that's that edge. Okay, let's use the grips to shorten it. There we go. Okay, we also have the one here at this edge, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and draw that object line. Make sure you follow the yellow construction line. Okay, and let's go ahead and shorten this using the grips. Okay, if I'm going too fast for you, you may want to pause, rewind. I'll leave it up to you. Okay, hit escape to deselect. Okay, so there it is. We're starting to see our auxiliary view. So we took care of the periphery. We took, took care of these edges here. Okay, so now let's draw the slots and we'll save the hole for last, which is the most difficult part. Okay, so now the slots. Okay, so here is the slot. Here is the depth of the slot. Okay, let me uh, hit escape. I'm going to take this yellow construction line just to show you that it lines up with the slot. And I'm going to change its thickness. I didn't want to talk about properties yet, but I just, but I want to show you didn't want to show you this part but I want to thicken this line just so you know the depth of that rectangular slot there it is and we'll do the other one on this side also on its opposite side and I'm gonna also make it thicker there it is hit escape all right so these construction lines these thicker yellow construction lines tells me the depth of the slot right okay so I need that so I know how far to go with the slot as I project. Okay, so we are in the visible object layer. Okay, use the line command. And here's the slot, right, from the front view. We're going to go follow the construction line, right? Follow the yellow brick lines. And, yep, yeah, you heard what I said. Follow the yellow brick lines, right? And there's the slot. That's the depth. And close it off. Okay, and right-click Enter. Okay, so there is the slot. Let's go ahead and use the grips to shorten it and hit escape. And there it is. Ta-da! 
Okay, let's do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so we can just follow along with this one. Let's use the line command. So let's follow this slot to create the one on the opposite side. There it is, right click enter. And the next one. And follow the yellow brick lines, right? And enter. And let's represent the depth. Okay, so we need to represent, see how this is the depth here. And right click enter. Okay, so now we can shorten this to the correct length using the grips. Same thing with this one. Okay, and hit escape to deselect. Ta -da! Okay, it's starting to look good, right? Let's temporarily turn off the construction layer. See, we're starting to see the auxiliary view, right? There it is, we're starting to see the auxiliary view. Now what we need is the circle, but before we move on, notice there's an opening here. It's like, hey teacher, you have a solid line going all the way through. We need to break this up here. Okay, so let's make an opening here. Okay, so I haven't introduced you to this uh, command yet. It's called the trim command. But before we do the trim, let me show you the long way of doing this. You can say, hey, uh, you know what? I can just fix this by shortening this one and recreating a new line. Okay, so that's an option to fix it nice and quick. But I'm going to introduce you to another command. So let's use a different command for the opposite side. I'm going to introduce you to trim. Okay, so trim. Okay, so you're going to pick lines. It doesn't have to be lines. It can be any uh, curves or lines you have already in your model. You can use them to cut other elements. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I can say, hey, I want to use this line and this line to cut off this portion of it. So I'm going to pre-select them. Then I'm going to hit the scissors, right? Trim. Click. And notice I'm, I'm only hovering over the area I want to trim off. See, I can trim off this side, this side, this side. And I'm going to click on this portion to remove. I'm done. Hit enter to exit. Ta-da! That's the trim command. Okay, and I will show the trim command uh, in more uh, in depth in a separate video, in the next lecture video. All right, so there it is. We took care of the slots. Okay, so now we need to take care of the circular opening. All right, so before we do that, I want to introduce you to UCS, right? User Coordinate System. So if we go back to our notes. Here's UCS, right? User coordinate system. So we're going to create our own user coordinate system. We need to go over to the view tab and we need to turn on our coordinates panel. Okay. All right. So you can see my cursor, right? It's vertical, horizontal. We're going to angle it. We're going to angle our cursor. And as you may already know, maybe forgot this red line and our green line. This is our vertical axis, horizontal axis, and this is the origin, zero, zero, right? X is zero, Y is zero, there's the origin. So we're gonna use our own coordinate system and we'll, we're gonna call this corner our UCS or our axis system, and this will be our new origin. And we're gonna angle it so it follows the auxiliary view. All right, so let's create our UCS. So we're gonna go to, let's go back, the view tab and we're look and we're gonna look for the coordinates panel. If it's not on, we'll right click and turn on the coordinates panel. So let's go to the view tab. Okay, so go to view tab. And let's see, I don't see my coordinates panel. Okay, so chances are you don't see yours either. So I'm gonna right click on any icon. It doesn't matter which one. Right click, go to panels. And notice my coordinates panel is not on. I can tell because there's no check mark. Click on it and in three, two, one, don't blink. Boom, there it is. It loads the coordinates panel. All right, did you blink? Rewind the video and play it again. All right, so here we go. Here's our UCS, user coordinate system. It's the plain looking icon out of all of them. 
Okay, so here we go. I'm going to click on UCS. So it's asking me, hey, where do you want to place your origin? Hey, I want the origin to be here at the corner of my bottom left corner of my auxiliary view. Click. Okay, so notice it's there's my new origin. So how, uh, or I should say, what angle do you want? What orientation? Well, I want to orient it so it's parallel with this line. My new horizontal or x-axis. I want my x-axis to be in line with this line. So as long as I pick a point along this line, I'll just pick the end point. Boom, there it is. So see what happened to my cursor? So now x is going in this direction, y in this direction. Now I need to click one more time. And that's to define our uh, x or our y. Do we want y to be positive in this direction or positive going downward? So we want our y to be positive in this direction. Notice if I hover over this bottom corner, the y flips downward. Now it's flipping upward, letting us know that this will be the positive direction. So as long as we pick a point, any point along this line, click. Now the y direction positive will be going upward with respect to our origin. This is the y positive direction and this is the negative direction. All right. so. That's going to help us um, create our circular hole, which is elliptical, right? Okay, so before we do, let's draw our green center lines. So I can uh, turn on our construction lines, but I'm going to make it more challenging. I'm going to go ahead and create my own center line. So let's go to the Home tab. And let's go to Construction Layer. I'm going to take Center Green Layer. So I'm going to draw my green center line going down the middle. Right, similar to what we see here in the front view, top view, my mistake, top view. Okay, so here we are. Notice the cursor is angled. So let's use line command. And I'm gonna go off of the center here on the side view, or we can always use the construction lines, but we turned them off. And see how uh, it's gonna go with respect to our cursor. Let me turn off object snap. So right now it's free to move, which I don't want. I want to restrict it with respect to the our new axis. So I'm going to turn on ortho in 3, 2, 1, ortho. Notice that now this is our vertical. This is our horizontal, right? Because we are using a user coordinate system. So there it is. And click and right click enter. So there's our center line. And now... I'm going to follow the exit point of this green center line. Okay, so let's go to center line. So we need to draw one going across. So I'm going to zoom into the front view and see where the green center axis exits the surface or starts or so hole starts along this surface. So we're going to go to this point here. So let me turn on object snap. So it's where the white visible object line intersects the green center line. That's where our center is for our hole with respect to the with respect to this view right here or the top surface. Okay, so I have ortho on. So see how it's everything is in line now? I'm going to slightly overextend, click and right click enter and zoom out. Okay, so we have our Center mark now, there's the center of our hole where the two green center lines intersect. Let me go ahead and shorten this a little bit. And it's trying to snap, so I'm gonna turn off object snap temporarily. But keep ortho on. And I can adjust it and just eyeball it. There it is, and hit escape. All right, so there's our center mark for the hole. So let's go ahead and draw our hole. Now keep in mind, it is elliptical. Okay, it's not circular, so we're not going to use the circle command. We're going to use the ellipse command. Okay, let me turn on construction lines. There it is. Okay, so our hole has to line up with the red hidden lines here at the top, right? Then we'll take care of the bottom portion, the exit of the hole. So first we're taking care of the entrance of the hole going through this top surface. So we're going to take a look at this line and this line. 
Here, let me make those thicker. Let me escape. Let me go back to uh, these uh, lines. Don't need to be thick anymore. Let me go back to the default by layer. Okay, and hit escape. Okay, so our ellipse is going to be between these thick yellow construction lines, right? See how it lines up with the red hidden lines? Okay, and we also need to line up with the ellipse in our right side view. Okay, so I'm going to take this construction line and extend it to the quadrant. Let me turn on object snap just so you can see where that construction line comes from. And same thing with this one. That construction line is supposed to line up with our quadrant, the quadrant on the ellipse. And I'm going to make them thicker. Hit escape. All right. So our ellipse is going to fall between, or you can see inside of this square, right? We know because it lines up with the ellipse here and it lines up with the red hidden lines representing the hole. So the ellipse is sitting inside this box. It's actually going to touch the box. And our center is where the green center lines intersect. Okay, so let's go to visible layer. Instead of circle, we're going to go to ellipse. Okay, so let's pick our center. Follow the instructions at the bottom. Left corner, the command line, so it's asking for the center. So we're going to pick our center. Make sure it's where the green center lines intersect. Okay, it's got to be where the green center lines intersect. So look for that green X. Don't pick the midpoint. Don't pick the green triangle. Let me keep zooming in. Okay, there it is. Click. Okay, so I click that point where the green center lines intersect. Then I'm going to go and hit where the thick yellow line and the green center line intersect. Okay, so I'm going to pick this intersection. Click. Okay, now we're starting to see it, right? We're starting to see it. Okay, so now we need to take care of the other uh, major or minor diameter. Okay, so we've defined one of the diameters. Now we need to define the other diameter. And let me roll in. Now I'm going to click on this one. We could have clicked on the opposite side. Let's click on this one and click. And we've defined our ellipse. Some of you are like, hey, teacher, that doesn't look like an ellipse. That looks circular. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong. By drawing a circle, and I'll delete it after this, let me draw a circle just to prove to you that we currently don't have a circle. It's actually slightly elliptical. I'm going to click, and just to prove it to you, notice how one is a circle, the other one is an ellipse. Notice how they don't uh, exactly line up with each other. It's because one is a circle and the other one is an ellipse. Okay, so let me hit escape to deselect or to escape the command. All right, so there it is. Okay, so that was a little difficult. Let me go and uh, turn, uh, let me go ahead and uh, take these thick yellow lines and turn them back to their default thickness with respect to its layer, the, green set, the yellow construction layer. Hit escape to deselect. Okay, now we need to draw the exit. Okay, so the bottom is the exit. That's a little bit tougher. So we're gonna follow this construction line from the bottom and also this one here from the bottom where the hole exits. Okay, we're going to make those thicker. Hit escape to deselect. So now we're going to look at the exit point. Okay, so if we go back to the 3D model, we're going to model the bottom, right? Where the hole exits. And it's going to look elliptical. And we can only see part of it, so this portion will be a visible white uh, ellipse. And the rest of it will be a red hidden ellipse. Okay? So that's the toughest part of this drawing. Okay, so let's go back. Now we also need to uh, look at this construction line where the green center line exits at the base. So we're going to also take a look at this construction line. I'll make it thicker. Okay, and hit escape. Okay, so we're going to follow these three thick construction lines to help us create the exit of the hole. Okay, so once again, we have one, two, three construction lines. Here's the center. This is where it exits. 
All right, so let's go ahead and draw an ellipse. Once again, ellipse. And here is the center point. Let me turn on Object Snap. Oh, it's already on. Okay, so I'm going to click. And then I'm going to go and define a one of our diameter for the ellipse. I'm going to click at this intersection between the thick yellow construction lines. Click. And now you can see it. There it is. You can see it, right? I'm not shaking. It's Object Snap is trying to snap. It's not my age that's causing all this shaking. Okay. And we can either go to this point here to define our other diameter, or we can go to this point here, right there, where the green center line and the thick construction line intersect and click. There's our exit. Ta -da! So some of you are, hey, teacher, it's only supposed to be part white visible object line and the other portion is supposed to be a red hidden line. All right, so let me turn off some of these uh, construction layers. Turn it off, there it is. Okay, so there is the exit. I know it's a little bit tough to visualize, but there it is. Okay, so this is the exit point. I'm gonna make a copy of this one and I'll bring it back in a minute and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna make a copy of this one, make a copy. I'm gonna grab it by its center and slide it with respect to our axis, slide it in the X direction, click. You can keep clicking to make another copy. All I need is one. Okay, so I'm gonna trim this one. So remember the trim command? So I'm gonna remove the bottom portion of this ellipse and keep the top portion. Okay, so I'm gonna use this ellipse to trim the other one. So I'm gonna pre-select it as our cutting element, and I'm gonna click on the scissors, click. And then I'm gonna remove the bottom portion. See that? I can remove the top, but I'm gonna remove the bottom. Click and enter. Ta-da! Okay, now let's move this one back. Okay, so let's go ahead and select this one. And we're going to move it, and we can move it using its center grip. Click, and just slide it so it lines up with the center of the partial ellipse, right? The one that we just trimmed off. Click. Okay, so now in this one, we're going to remove the top portion. But before we do, we're going to move it over to the red hidden layer. Here it is. See, we can move it to another layer. There it is. Hit escape to deselect. Okay, so now we're going to trim off the top portion of the red hidden ellipse. So let's use our scissors again, but first pre-select the cutting element. Use the scissors. And we're going to remove the top portion of the red hidden ellipse, as you can see. Click. Bam! There it is. It's gone. Hit escape. There's the exit. Okay, now we can use our uh, lines to connect the quadrants. Whoop, I'm in the wrong layer. Escape. Let's go to hidden layer. We need to represent the hole cutting through the object. So we need to go to quadrants, go from here to here, enter. So there are, that represents the hole cutting through and exiting at the bottom. And we also need one at, on the opposite side. So we'll go quadrant to quadrant. There it is, enter. Okay, so there's the hole, right? Just like in the 3D model. Ta-da! Easy, right? Well, maybe not that easy, but... Okay, so now, just when you thought you were done, hey, we still got to do the other side. Okay, so we don't need this view anymore. This right side view, I can, uh, I'm gonna left mouse click and go from bottom to, bottom right to upper left. Oh, didn't click correctly. Hit escape, I was trying to select. I'm having trouble selecting, so I'll just use my lasso again, my rope, left mouse click. Trying to do something different, I couldn't get it to work. Okay, and I'm gonna erase. Don't need these anymore. Get rid of this one. Don't need this one. Don't need this one. Let me just delete it. Okay, it's okay because we have our backup view over here on the side. So that's our auxiliary view, and I think we're done with this one. Oh, one thing I did forget a green center line for the bottom portion. Okay, so let's go to center line. Uh, you may get away with not having to put a green center line for the bottom portion of the ellipse. 
I click enter and then I'm going to extend it using the grips. Okay, there it is. All right, so we're done with this auxiliary view. And we can always bring back the other one. Let me turn on construction layer. There it is. And I'm going to lasso, so left mouse click, capture, use the move command. I'll grab it from this bottom right corner and I'll move it over. Well, turn off ortho. We're still in UCS mode. Turn off ortho. And there it is. I'm going to line it up with the construction lines. Ta-da! That was the move command. Okay, so now let's do the other auxiliary view. Okay, so let's turn off the construction layer. Turn on the other one. There it is. All right, so we're going to have to use the right side view again. Okay, so we're going to use this one. Make a copy and move it over. Let me first uh, do lasso, capture this. And I'm simply going to move it over. Oh, my mistake. Not move. Escape, escape, exit, exit. I'm going to say copy this window lasso again. All right, learn from my mistakes. We're going to copy. And let's use one of the grips here to grab it from. And then we'll uh, line it up. So click to make a copy, right click enter to exit. So we're going to line it up with this auxiliary view construction line. So let's go ahead and capture. And we're going to, once again, use the align command. Use align, just like we did on the first auxiliary view. Okay, so we're going to go from this corner to this corner and rotate it from this corner to that corner and then hit enter twice enter enter bam there it is so that'll help us create our next auxiliary view which is easier than the first one okay so let's go back to the front view okay this time instead of uh, rotating with respect to the slot we're gonna rotate with respect to the axis which has a different angle okay so Imagine we can see the axis, and just like rotating the small American flag, we're going to rotate it so we look down the hole. And that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit easier. The slots we'll take care of at the end, uh, at the end and we'll do the circle first, circular hole. But we first have to do our periphery and object lines. Let's take care of that. All right, so we're going to speed things up a little bit. Okay, so let's go over to the white visible layer. Now, before we do, notice that our cursor doesn't have the same angle, right? Because this time we rotated about the green center line, right? And not the slot. Okay, so that's why our angle for this auxiliary view is not the same as this one, because we're rotating perpendicular to the green center line. You can see that all the yellow construction lines are parallel to the green center line. On the previous one, all the yellow construction lines were parallel to the slot. Okay, so hit escape to deselect. All right, so let's go ahead and take care of the periphery. This will go a lot faster than the first one. Okay, so visible layer, line command. But let me first uh, create a new UCS. The UCS doesn't match, our user coordinate system doesn't match, our new auxiliary view orientation. So let's go back to view, go to UCS, And we're going to pick a new origin, right? As you can see, new angle for our X, and we'll go positive in this direction for our Y. So now the cursor follows the auxiliary view. All right, so let's go back to the Home tab. I'm going to go a little bit faster. Let's use Line Command. And I'll start at this corner. It's a good idea to turn on ortho because you can see ortho now follows our new UCS, user coordinate system. And we can close it. We can keep this white visible object line from the right side view. Okay, and right click enter to exit. Okay, so there it is. Now let's project over our corners. So from this corner, 
right there it is and right click enter to exit to the next one that corner project over and right click enter to exit okay so now i'm going to use the grips to shorten it to the correct length same thing with this one oh misclicked there it is hit escape to deselect okay so now we can draw our circle our circular hole so from this perspective it is circular okay so you can see we can go a lot faster now okay so this line is the one that line that lines up with our green center line right so let's go ahead and draw our center lines first okay get those out of the way and it will also help us center the the hole always go slightly beyond I click enter and we can go ahead and shorten it this is where I need to turn off object snap temporarily but have to keep ortho on there it is hit escape to deselect there's our center line and let's draw this one here we'll go from the center of the ellipse let's turn on object snap Okay, and there's our center and go beyond there it is right click enter okay so there it is hit escape okay so where the green center lines intersects intersect that's the center of our hole okay so the hole is the same diameter right or length here between the red hidden lines so I'm gonna make these darker just so you know where our circular hole where the where the quadrants intersect using these yellow construction lines I'll make them thicker okay so we know that our circle is gonna land between these inside of these yellow lines these are the tangent lines the thick yellow construction lines and here's our center and we actually don't need these lines because we can easily define a circle with the center point and a radius so let's go to the visible layer draw circle command use the circle command click Go to where the green lines intersect, green center lines, click. And we can go to e either one, it doesn't matter which one. Let me roll in to zoom in. Where the yellow line and the green center line intersect, that'll be our tangent point, click. And that's it, we've defined our circle just with two clicks, a center and any of the four quadrants. Okay, so there it is. That was pretty straightforward. We don't need hidden circles in this one or hidden ellipse. Ellipse is because we're looking straight down the axis of the hole. Okay, now let's take care of the slots. Now the slots are angling away from us, right? And the exit at the bottom, but we cannot see it from this perspective, right? So we need to draw the slots and hidden lines to show where it exits at the base. And then we'll be done. All right, so Let's go ahead and draw our red hidden lines. Let me first take these yellow construction lines and turn them back to their normal thickness. My layer, there it is. Hit escape to deselect. Okay, the slots. Okay, so first we need to look at where it starts and then we'll do the exit point. Okay, so let's first focus on these construction lines right there, right? Let's make them thicker. Hit escape. And this construction line represents the depth. Okay, so we'll make that thicker. Same thing with this line. That construction line represents the depth of this slot. Let's make that one thicker. Okay, hit escape. Okay, so we know the slots, the slot is right there, right? Where these yellow construction lines intersect. So let's, let's go ahead and use our visible object lines. To create the slot okay right click enter there's the slot we can do the same thing for the opposite side we can see it right using the construction lines right click enter there it is okay so that's the entry point right so if we go back to the 3d model there it is we have our visible object lines for the slot notice how we have a visible line here so this one's not open like the previous auxiliary view it was open this way from this perspective it's closed right 
So this is one solid visible object line. So now we need to represent the exit with red hidden lines on both sides. And we need to represent it sliding down, downward at an angle. Okay, so let's focus on the exit points. Okay, so let me turn these yellow construction lines, these two right here, back to their thickness with respect to its layer. There it is, hit escape to deselect. So now let's go to the bottom of the slot in the front view. Okay, so at the bottom, okay, we have this construction line and this one. See where the slot exits here at the bottom? So we need these two construction lines to guide us along for our auxil auxiliary view. Okay, so let's go ahead and as you can see, there it is. So these construction lines, let me hit escape to deselect. These thick construction lines are telling us that this is the exit point of that slot. Okay, you can see it here from the bottom and project at this angle with respect to the center line. And there's the exit point. Let me roll in. So here's the entry point and here's the exit point. Okay, so let's draw our visible object lines. And I used the wrong layer. These are supposed to be hidden lines. Okay, let me undo. Hit escape, let me undo. Or I can just select them, right? And move them to the red hidden layer. So I used the wrong layer. Okay, you know what? I can just move them over to the hidden line layer. There it is, ta-da, hit escape. Okay, so there's the exit point. Okay, let me temporarily turn off our construction lines. There's the exit point. So entry point, X is at the base, but we need to show that it goes through the entire material. So we're gonna go ahead and extend this one and hit escape to deselect. So it's sliding down and this is the exit point at the base. And all we have to do is repeat it on the opposite side. Let's turn on our construction lines and we're almost done. Okay, so there's the slot. So let's go over to the red hidden layer Draw our red hidden lines. There it is, right click enter. Turn off the construction layer. And we need to extend this line to show it going through the entire material. Just like the opposite side, hit escape to deselect, and there it is. Okay, so we're done with this auxiliary view. Actually, we're almost done. I did miss something on both views, but let me first delete this right side view. I missed something. Okay, so let me lasso around these objects and delete them. Don't need them anymore. So get rid of the evidence that you cheated, right? Okay, so there's our auxiliary view. Let me hit escape. I did miss something. Let me show you the solutions. So here we have our auxiliary views are complete, but we missed some hidden lines. Let me show you the hidden lines we missed. Let's go to the answer key. There's this long red hidden line back here. Same thing on this one. We have this long red hidden line. That represents that back edge here. Okay. Same thing with this one. So it projects across. So. Even though we don't see it, we have this back edge, this object line right here that we don't see from uh, the auxiliary view position. So it starts at this corner here and it goes across, but we don't see it. So we need to represent it with the red hidden line. Okay, so let's do, uh, let's turn on our construction layer. You know, before we do, let me exit user coordinate system. Okay, so I'm gonna exit the user coordinate system. So to exit, we need to go back to view, and we need to go to world, world, to exit. Okay, it'll go back to its default in three, two, one. You can also type in WCS in the command line to exit user coordinate system, UCS, or you just click on the globe, click, and now we're back to, see how the cursor changed? We're back to the default position, right? If you look at the notes, Look for the icon that has the little globe, right? 
All right, so let's go ahead and draw that red hidden line. Let me turn on the construction layer, go to the home tab, go to construction, turn it on. Okay, make sure you are in the red hidden layer, draw our line. So from this back corner, right? Let me turn on fourth though, and we're gonna track the construction line, right? From this corner, follow that construction line. And there it is, right click enter. And let's go ahead and shorten it. There's that red hidden line representing that, that back edge on the opposite side. There it is. Now let's do the one on this side. Once again, we're tracking from the bottom left corner. Click and follow the construction line. There it is. Right click enter. And let's go ahead and shorten this to the correct length. Bam. There it is. Hit escape. Let's turn off our construction layers, right? And ta-da! There it is. All right, class. So I think we got everything. If I missed something, uh, make a comment below. So this is the toughest, or one, actually one of the toughest assignments. It okay, looks like we got everything. Yep, we got all the hidden lines, center lines, right? And here on the solutions, I should have extended these green center lines to show symmetry. Same thing with this one, I should have extended the green center line in the solutions. If you didn't, it's okay, I'm not gonna take points off. All right, so one more thing before I close this uh, video session. Notice how I had two front views. I only need one, this is, You'll get in trouble with your boss. Boss is going to say, hey, why do you have an extra front view? Well, we're cheating by creating a copy, right, of the front view to help us create our separate auxiliary view. Okay, so you can save your work now and turn it in as it is. But if you were to turn this into your boss, again, we have two front views, as you can see. Delete the evidence. I'm going to delete it. And then uh, if we have room on our sheet, whether it's an eight and a half by 11 sheet, 11 by 17 or even larger, we'll talk about sheet sizes in our next chapter. So then I can take this one and move it so it lines up with the center line of the hole. So remember the center line here? So I'm supposed to actually line it up so that the green center lines, the axis, line up with each other. I'm just gonna eyeball it, but it's supposed to line up. And if uh, if we have room on our sheet, once again, you wanna line these up. So if I was to extend this, you should line it up. So I'm gonna use the move command. I'm gonna move it, you want it to line up Actually, my mistake in this case, actually, no, it's right. That was correct, but make sure it's where it exits at the, or where the object line, the white visible object line intersects the green center line. There it is. Okay, so there it is. And now I can go ahead and shorten this. I'm trying to track away, it's not allowing me to. Let me turn off object snap. Shouldn't eyeball it, but there it is. There it, there it is, escape. Okay, so this is what it should really look like if you had room on a sheet, whether it's an A-size paper or B-size 11 by 17. Okay, but uh, you can leave it the way it looks in the solutions. And we're done with this problem. Don't forget to save it. So I'm gonna go save as, add your initials. Okay, and save your work. If you're going to email this to me right away, Again, don't forget to save your work and close the file before you attach it to an email or some of you are uh, submitting your work through Canvas. Either way is fine. All right, so that's the end of uh, this handout. Our next handout, we're gonna be doing more uh, auxiliary, I should, my mistake, more uh, orthographic projections, front, top, side view, just a little bit more challenging. And the views will be more incomplete 
So the next problems are going to be worth more points, 10 to 15 points each. Okay, so that's the end of this video.